Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, part 7 now I believe in the um, A7V build with uh, Roadie Hobby Corner, Ben Wag. We'll have a look at his build as well. He's ahead of me but um, you know if you like watching builds twice by two different people then hey, <laughs> throw your boots. Um, so I've now got this, I've put another cut of red oxide on, red oxide at all underneath where all the joints were and everything and as you can see it's had a, a gloss varnish. Um, and I've also discovered that I've dropped a boo-boo. While I was putting the varnish on, I noticed there's some like slots here and holes and stuff. And basically, if I go on and hairspray this now, paint it white and chip it, when I come to adding these parts, which are actually brackets and some other bits and pieces, then what's going to happen is I'm going to end up having to try and weather things twice or make the freshly fitted parts blend in with the previously weathered floor. So what I need to do is get all of the floor built up, everything that's attached to the floor. And I think there's ammunition cases and everything that go in here and make sure I get everything on there so that when it comes to the time to actually finally fitting it all, I'm not having to weather everything twice. Just to explain myself with these simple brackets, there's like a triangular bracket that goes here. Um, here we go. I can show you the instructions here. It's a triangular bracket which goes on the ends of the floor here. If I do this now and paint chip it and everything, when I come to fit them, they'll be freshly painted white and then I'll have to actually individually chip them or do something to them. Whereas if I build the whole thing up, which I should have done in the first place, um, then I wouldn't be in this situation now. So what I need to do now is get all that done um, in keeping with the instructions, I'm also going to, oh, sorry, to not rush ahead. All of this here has all now been painted. Um, it's all red oxided and it's got a coat of varnish on it. So now all this can be painted green and chipped. The brass parts of the radiator need to be masked up um, and then I can paint them black and then get all that assembled and, and go from there. But this is all green, so it's going to be added on after this is all painted white anyway. Um, so in keeping the instructions, the next thing to do is the gun, which looks like quite an enjoyable little assembly. So I'm going to get all this off the sprues. It's mainly G sprue. Uh, I think there's one H part there and two J's there. But the rest of it, is, it's, it's, there's a bit of photo etch. It's all G sprue. This is G sprue. I guess it's, um, I believe it's a six pounder gun. So um, I guess they sort of use this this uh, same sprue in the... Um, in the in the British tanks as well I, I don't know so um nice barrel there isn't it one piece drilled and everything so let's get this gun together and I'll come back right so the gun is done um, I got all the parts off the sprue cleaned them all up and they're all here and as you can see um, the base is already not attached but it's just there for painting and weathering um, G24 that's already on the on the floor so we've got this little piece here, this little G6, which is like a little little gear that goes on the bottom of the gun and then you've got this little clip that goes over. So um, I'll do that later after that, it's painted and weathered. Uh, I think they're saying here the gun is all white, um, other than the cushions here. I've got that video that was kindly referred to me on, on here, um, on part five I think it was, or part six maybe. Uh, thank you very much where a guy referred me to a, a, a YouTube video where they take a walk around inside a replica. So I've got some colours there. Um, I think this uh, aiming mechanism here, I think this is painted grey. We'll, we'll have a look. But I think it's a, it's a six pounder gun anyway. But it's probably all white. Um, all white. It's probably all white uh, except for the actual barrel. So I think pretty much everything inside the tank would have been white. So, um, so yeah, that's all um, glued together now. Um, there was quite a lot of clean up. And once again, like I say about these bloody stupid sprue connection points, they've got this one piece barrel, which is um, beautifully molded. Sorry about the fingernails, guys. Disgusting. Um, beautifully molded, um, slide molded in one piece. And then they put a sprue connection point, not on the bottom, nope, on the top. So, yeah, really cool. Great that. Uh, so you've got to you know, work hard to get, get rid of that and make sure it's sanded out and everything. That's going to need some primer on there just to check it isn't visible. Um, so yeah, it's quite a well detailed little gun. Uh, this model is by no means a quick build. Um, there's a lot of work in it. Um, 
there's a seam under there I haven't bothered doing because it's, it's never going to be seen it's you know it's completely underneath so yeah that's basically going to sit sit on the tank chassis like that with this um with this shroud around it so something like that if I can get it to go in which I don't think I can no let's try it like this there we go so it's going to need glue in to make it stay but um basically yeah, it slots in like that and you've got this photo etch ring around the top so um yeah that's all in now um so that's that done so working on the instructions here so we've got the gun done uh, i'm not going to paint this now because there's going to be loads more paint in the same color so now we've got the um fighting compartment accessories and these i believe uh what are these these are um ammo racks by the look of it and they're saying that the actual guns the um, ammo boxes are, are optional I think I saw somewhere yeah well they've got the guns with the um, you've got the, the the ammo belts here so the, the ammo belts come down so they're gonna go into here I'm guessing there's ammo belts there's no box there though for that one yes there is they're here so yeah I mean I'm, you need the ammunition boxes in there for the belts to connect to so I don't know why they put them optional <laughs> So um, yeah, I'll be do. I'll build. I'll build these up now, um, and then I'll come back and we'll get on with all this down here. Right, I've got these parts all off the sprue now. These are the parts for the um, the ammunition um, ammunition box. Well, there's an ammunition box there. And then you've got the gunner seats, which also forms an ammunition rack. And these two are for the um, big gun on the. I think on the front, and then you've got four of these. For the uh, for the remainder of the guns um quite tricky to assemble i've done one and uh said a few swear words main thing is if you're building this kit on the bottom of these seats this part here the top of the seat base there's two ejector pins on the back and i can show you here that they've got raised edges on them if the camera will focus they've got raised edges on them which you need to remove so that's something a little tip for you there because they, they sit on quite a wide ledge and they do get in the way um try and get this light a bit better for you so this is my suggestion having done one i think i'll try this one a new way um i'm just going to put some glue on here and then sorry i'm off the camera and then stick that on there so that's the actual seat base part and then you've got this part here, which goes this way up. The camera's really struggling to focus. It goes this way up and it goes with that part forward. So the forward is the lower end. So basically I've just got a little bit of plastic in there. So I'm going to put a little bit of cement there and a little bit of cement there. And then this should just sit in like that there we go that's in there like that now i tried to do this before by gluing the two sides to the base and then putting these in and it's um it's a bit of trickery a bit of trickery involved in that one so i'm going to put some cement on there some cement on there and cement on there remember you're only going to ever see these from the top so those ejector pins underneath you don't really need to fuss about too much i need to move that up and then this is so awkward i haven't seen ben's build if ben's already done this i'd like to know if i wonder if he struggled with this but um yeah not the easiest build in the world and as I said earlier, I think this is no quick build. If you're after a quick build kit, you know, a weekend build or whatever, don't get this one. If it's in your stash and you want a weekend build, don't get it out of your box. It is not a quick build. Um, I don't think any of these tanks with interiors are really, are they? Um, and then I'm just going to put the base on. Just 
just touch some cement on like that and then come around to the other side and that's that there's your ammo box gunner seat there's, there's two of them so I think these bits they actually go on the floor here and they they go in there and I think they they swivel with the gun so that the so that the machine gunner could swivel so there's going to be lots of opportunity for weathering on the floor there so I'm um, glad I've done this so I think yeah what I'm gonna to have to do with this model although I started off by you know painting this and thinking about you know hairspray and stuff I think I'm gonna to have to go all the way through and get all the interior done before I start doing any of that and then we've also got this um, here we've got this simple uh, ammunition box and they give you a this ammunition box um, which is just got the simple ends of shells on molded on like a bit of Lego there um, and then you got a lid to go on it which fits really nice I don't know if I use the lid or not I think the uh, the brass shells might be an opportunity to add a bit of color to the interior away from just you know white and black um, and, and green and I've also cut off if you can see here you've got these these triangulated end pieces they sit in here like so well, that's the wrong way around they sit in there so they're going to be glued in and painted. There is a tiny ejector pin mark on them, which is uh, every manufacturer should take as a lesson. They're just like three or four swipes with a sand stick and it's gone. Very, very faint ejector pin marks. So that's all okay. Um, and then we've also got these here, which I don't need to show you built. These are just the smaller boxes. And I've also taken off the sprues and cleaned up these um, ammo boxes which have got a nice bit of detail on them as you can see there um, and they're um, they're here they're shown on the instructions as, as optional but I'm gonna put them because I want to be able to use the ammo belts um, I don't know why they've got these as optional the ammo belts as part of the uh, part of the kit really they they should both be optional I think um, and then there's this part to go in here which is a seat so I'm gonna get all this done um, and then I'll be back Right, so that's been taken care of. I've put these pieces on here, as you can see there. So they're on now. There's bracket or gusset, should I say, <sighs> coming in the plastic dust. Um, I haven't put the ammunition box together or fitted it. I put the gun together, but not fitted it. Uh, you can get an idea of what it's going to look like when I sit it on there like that. You can see that's where it's going to go. I'm not quite sure what this is. I'm not sure if it's a loader seat or something or what it is. It's, it's funny because it's got a little, um, I don't know if you can see it there, it's got a little dimple on it. So uh, to the sort of three o'clock there. So I don't know what that's for. Um, but anyway, so that's that tool done. Um, so I've gone over the page and here we've got the machine guns. Now, these are mega. Um, there's basically three different machine guns. So you've got six machine guns, um, which are basically, you've got the actual gun itself, which is here, which I've uh, cleaned up and put the handles on the back, or whatever you call them, I can't remember the cord now. I've also, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on it, but I've also drilled the end, yeah, you can see there, I've drilled the end of the barrels out. Uh, I think Ben's using the Aber um, brass guns, which are much nicer than these. Um, but yeah, these are good enough, I think. So, and then that's going to go uh, that way round. No, that way round into there. Like that. Which is, basically that's upside down. And then the, you've got these bits. What have we got now? We've got that bit there which goes in and holds the gun in place, which goes that way round. So that goes in there and holds the gun in place. And then we've got this piece here, which is gonna, the gun, it's a gun support. So then the gun is gonna sit in the tank, mounted like that. Um, 
that's the not glued and then that's going to be able to swivel on there and you've also got another piece which goes in here which supports the back of the gun it's probably a counterweight or something um now i haven't glued any of this together because i want to be able to paint the gun and paint the inside of this before i do any um putting putting stuff together any assembly is the word I was looking for. Um, and then I can roughly mask it up with some tape or some blue tack or something when it comes to paint it. Because I don't think there'll be any way of neatly painting all that and getting it all black inside without getting black on the white bits. So um, don't want black on your white bits, do you? Um, so that bit goes in there and that bit goes in there. So yeah, there we are. Um, also that bit goes in there. So you can see here... We've, we've basically got the four different types. There's there's four of these and then one each of these um, with the different, the, the smaller, the, the, the smaller mountings on them. It's the only difference. Um, and then they're going to get fitted into the, the sides. We've also got these um, ammo belts here, which are on the sprue um, as a straight run. So obviously they're telling you to bend them like this. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get them fitted. Well, I'm going to get the um, the guns into the side walls, get the side walls mocked in place where the ammunition boxes are, and then get these, bend these as a, you know, to get them natural. That is not at all natural. And um, I don't think that's how they would have been. They probably would have just come down and fallen down. Um, but some nice paint instructions from there. And they are actually... Um, really nice really nice little ammo belts they're beautifully molded so uh nice one bang on that and then um then we're going to be going onto these sides and get these sides in and obviously this will be where i'll get the iron oxide out again and then the hairspray and the white paint so i'm hoping that i'll be able to put the mounts on the side of the the tank and then slot the guns in afterwards um rather than have to glue it and i think there's some big ejector pin squares things on these let's have a look from my from memory of my review um yeah there's some i don't know if you can see them like there's some great big squares in the side of it here and i think they're basically ejector pins or ejector blocks so they're going to be sanded filled whatever to get rid of them before i start doing anything with those so um yeah we're still a long way away from the end uh it's a pretty major build this one so um, we'll call it, for, call it a day for there, and then when I come back, I'll have these guns all painted up and fitted in their mountings, um, and we'll start some work on the sides here. I also need to finish, the, finish off these ammunition racks and get them painted up. I'm not going to glue them in now, because obviously these are going to go, as I showed before, they're going to go in like this and then swivel. So I'll be able to use that to mark out my positions and... Um, basically be able to scratch the floor up and everything so there'll be some um you know some metal and uh yeah i'm guessing what i should do i, could, I suppose is dry brush this scratch this first dry brush it then hairspray it dry brush it with silver then hairspray it then <laughs> then spray it white and then do the chip in and scratch it off in that pattern again and you'll have the metal showing through i don't know we'll, we'll think about that when we get to it but i want it to look really nice inside because um the detail inside this tank is quite uh, quite astounding and it's quite featureless without it so i yeah, lift the top off and look inside so we'll call that a day oh i am um, i painted these tracks as well i don't think i showed you that painted these in my my newest favorite paint tamia is it xf84 yeah, XF84 Dark Iron. Um, wonderful paint. Really, really nice for for getting that sort of matte grey metallic look. Beautiful paint. Um, get yourself some really, really good stuff. It's now my go-to for uh, tracks. In fact, I need to go get some more tomorrow, which means I'll have to go to Antics, which means I'll probably buy another kit. Uh, I've actually got my eyes on a Zucamura um, Dornia 335 which is the push me pull me prop thing um and uh yeah the zuki miura kit i think is probably nicer than the um hong kong models one i used to have the hong kong models when i sold it so anyway there we go um yeah so um 
yeah, we'll get all this done and then, uh, well, I'll get these guns um, painted and put those parts together and then I'll, I'll come back and uh, we'll get all this put together and painted and everything. Um, and there's some big ejector pin marks in here we've got to deal with. Uh, I don't know if you can see them in the light. There's like a big square there. Um, on, on there, they're, they're like big ejector pin marks or ejector block marks, I guess we should call them. Very hard to pick up on the camera because they are very, very slight. So hopefully it'll just be a quick rub of the sand and stick. They'll be gone. But there's basically one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. So, um, yeah, so we'll call that a day there, guys. If you think I'm um, being lazy, <laughs> uh, this is what I've done here today. What you've seen on this video, this part seven, this is, what is it today? It's uh, Thursday, the 10th of January. Um, I think I started this around about 12 o'clock and it's now quarter to eight. Now I took the dog out, so so that's uh, seven and three quarters. So say seven hours, I had a bit of lunch as well. So say six and a half hours, six and a half hours I've been on this to do this, what you've seen in this few minute video. There is so much clean up and so much work. It's incredible. So um, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Please like, please subscribe, share, tell your friends, whatever. And um, and I'll see you soon with the next part. Bye bye.